Hi, this is about EMX from the Candid Frame, and I wanted to show you one of the ways that I use the book module. Uh, in a previous video, I told you how I will go and edit through my work and try to cull it down to about a manageable number of images. Um, but what do I do with those images after I've done with that? And one of the things that I've been liking, I like to do, is actually create a PDF portfolio of select images. Uh, it's one thing to make individual prints or just to keep them either loaded on my computer to upload to Facebook or Flickr or something along those lines. But there's something to be said about looking at it either on a page or on the virtual page. And one of the good things about Lightroom 4 is that it really allows me the ability to make a book and see the images in that different context. Um, some of you may already know you're able to lay out books in the software and print them up as blurb books. You can actually take the files, upload it to blurb, and have them print a book for you. But one of the ways that I prefer to use it is in the creation of my PDFs. And I want to show you how exactly how I do that. So here we are in Lightroom and we have the, uh, the book module here. Now, as you've seen before, I created all these various categories for this trip that I took to Italy. And so I went through all those images and the images in each category that I really preferred, I would give them um, two stars. And you can see here at the bottom of the screen that some of the images have been um, rated with, with two stars. So I went through all these different categories and really went through the process of going, okay, which of these images do I really like? And after I went through all the categories, I created a, a collection here that's called books. So I have about 49 of those images that I want to put together in this, in this PDF. So what I do is I go over here to the right where I have my book settings. And one of the first options you want to choose here is PDF. You also have blurb here if you do want to get a you know, bound copy of the book, but we're going to stick here for PDF. And the software offers a variety of different formats. You have small square, standard portrait, et cetera, and, and so forth. So in terms of the PDF, it really doesn't make a huge difference what you're choosing here, other than the fact that you, you may prefer a portrait or a landscape mode. For this book, I'm just going to go with a small square. I have a variety of horizontal and vertical images. So um, I think that the square format will help me to showcase the images regardless of what the orientation is. Here I have these settings here in terms of the JPEG quality. I'm setting it for 100%. Um, the color profile is going to be sRGB. Considering that I'm going to be sending this to, to someone else, um, the sRGB color space is the default color space for the web, so uh, it just makes sense that it's there. Um, it's, the resolution is 300 dpi, and then I'll leave it for that. In terms of sharpening, I have a variety of different options here, um, but I'm just going to leave it at the de default. doesn't make a huge bit of difference in terms of it being a PDF. Um, some people might prefer to do a low, uh, low sharpening because it is adding sharpening to whatever else that you've done already in, in Lightroom. So, um, that's a choice. That's a choice that you, you have there. Now you have a variety of options here. One of them is the auto layout, which will actually take all the images that you have in this collection and lay them out for you. But before we get to that step, there's an important thing they have to do, and that's the layout of the individual pages. Now, if you click on here on the page, you'll get these options that appear on the screen. And you'll see that for if you want to add just one photo to the page, you'll have all these different layouts. You have like a full, uh, full, full bleed for the entire image. If it's a square, it'll be filled up with the frame, otherwise it's going to crop it. But otherwise, you might want to see that you have vertical and horizontal images that you want to reuse. It goes from the top to the bottom. Um, some of these other ones leave white space. If you wanted to include text or captioning, you have the options to be able to do that. For me, I kind of like seeing my images full frame. I may go a full bleed with some of those, but I like to have the choice. So one of the things I want to do is I want to have the software do an auto layout for me, but I want it I wanted to do it based on the preferences that I have in terms of the pages. So what I can do is I can right click on any of these layout designs that I like and by right clicking I can go add layout to favorite. And I'm going to do that for four of the page formats here. So I did the um, these two here that go all the way to the edge of the page. 
Now I want to have choices in terms of how it's used with some white space around it. So I like this one. This is a little larger than the one on the right. So I'm going to go this one and I'll go this one here. I don't, I don't have any real square formats here. And I do have some smaller ones here. So I'm going to add those as well. So total, I have about six that I can actually, I have as my favorites. And if I click here on favorites, I'll see that all six of those different page formats have been selected here. So this is really important to do so that when you hit the auto layout feature, it will choose of a, any one of those six page layouts in terms of how it lays out the, the, uh, the images on the page. And you'll see in a moment why I kind of like that. So next thing I want to do is the, is the edit layout preset. So I can go here and you'll see here that I have a variety of different op options. By default, it will, it will do the left page blank and the right page with an image. So I'll do that real quick here. And you'll see that it's going to take those photographs, all 49 of those photographs, and it's going to create a layout in which the image on the right uh, is shown, but opposite the page is blank. So you can see here that all, all those images are just showcased on the right side. And that's really good if you just want to emphasize just one particular photograph and you just want to have that white space on, on the left-hand side. I want to do more than that because sometimes I like the relationship that one image has to another. And, and also when I'm doing it in terms of a PDF and the way it looks on a, uh, on an iBook or a, not an iBook, but an iPad, um, that blank page, um, is just read as a, as a blank page. So it's an additional, it's additional step to go through the book. So I like having images on both sides. So I'm going to clear the layout here. And I'm going to go up here to edit my page layouts. And what I'm going to choose here is one photo per page. So now it's going to put one photo on every page. But before I do that, I want to be able to choose this option, random from favorites. So you saw before that I chose about six different page formats. So that's what I'm going to utilize. Uh, in terms of the number of photos, I'm just going to choose one per page. And here's another thing that's really important. Zoom photos to fill. So I want to make sure that they fit on the page rather than they fill up the entire, uh, that the image is seen on the entire sheet or page. I don't want it cropped, and it may end up doing that if I do it to fill. So I choose it to fit, and at this point, I can save this as a preset. So I'm going to call this Italy book preset and hit create. So now you'll see that this preset is, is, is set here. So now all I have to do is hit the auto layout and it automatically takes all those images and it's created the pages for me. And it's done a really nice job in terms of laying them out. It's, I selected a cover and a back cover. So if I, you know, if I wanted to move the images so that they appear better in terms of that, uh, that those front pages, I can do that as well. But you can take a look at 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 the the way that everything is sort of paginated here, and it's really nice. Sometimes the images are using the entire width or length of the pages in this case, and in other images, it's using much more white space surrounding the images. So. One of the first things I do is I just take a look and see how the images play off each other. And even though this is sort of done at random in terms of page sizing, it's really taking its cue from the order in which the images are laid out in my, in my, uh, in, in the thumbnail view down here. So if for whatever reason there was a specific order that I wanted images displayed, uh, in the book, all I would need to do before I hit the auto layout was to would be to change the placement of the images in any point in this in this uh, in these list of thumbnails that are down here. But I'm not locked in to just having the images displayed as they are here. Um, I can make changes at any point. So, for example, if I like this image here to be placed here, all I need to do is grab the image drag it over 
and those two images will switch places. And it will follow the format of whatever the original image was. So if I go to this view here, you can see that the image has now been placed here. And now if I want to make some other changes to it, I can do that. Now, one of the changes I might want to make is that they're both full bleeds here. Not, not full bleeds, but they're, they're taking up either the width or the, uh, the maximum height of the image. But let's say it's like, I like this image being taking up the full width, but I don't want this image to be taking up the same size. I think they're having them approximately the same dimensions. sort of, it, it doesn't work as well. So what I can do is I can go to this little arrow down here and those page layouts that I had available to me previously are here. So in this case, I say, okay, I want to use the smaller, smaller page, uh, smaller page view of the image for that. And you can see here that it makes the image smaller. It makes it one a little more dominant. And I'd like the fact that the, there's more, there's more air around the, this image. And I think it reads better across that other image on the page. So I can go back here to my, to my view and I can make such changes throughout any of the, any of the, uh, page views here. If, for example, I think that this image, these pair of images should be earlier in the book, I can just highlight both of those pages. And I'm hitting my command key to select both of those pages. I can drag it and I'll see this little yellow line in between those two page layouts and the image will appear there. So I have a lot of, a lot of control. So as well as being able to switch out individual images, I'm also able to move entire pages. Now, for example, if I wanted to, I like this image here of the, uh, the carousel. And I want this to play a little bigger. So I have the option here of going, okay, let's go for the full width of the image there. But I might like it even more and say, let me do this as a two page spread. So what I can do is I can hit this and then I can go, Okay, two page spread. And what I wanted to do is make as much use of that page as possible. So what I'll do is hit that and then the image will take up those two pages and it will shift the image that was to the right of it over to the next page. So now when I take a look at this, I can see that the image here has been shifted over and all the images have to been shifted over by, by one. So you have to be conscious of that in case there was a particular image that was that you really wanted to be next to another photograph or for whatever reason. But, you know, there are certain images like this one that really look good over a two page format. Now, for example, I may like these two images, but I want them on the same page. So what I can do is again, go to this arrow indicator, go to two photos, choose the layout design that I want, which is I'll just use this first one. And then it will create a small gray box to the right of that first image. And at this point I can just drag this one image over, over here. Now it leaves this gray spot in here. So what I can do is this gives me an opportunity to put in a brand new image that I may not have selected initially. So what I can do here is I can go to, I'll go to my, go to my people's folder and I'll look at the images here that are vertical, but that uh, don't have two stars. And I'll say, I'll go with this one and I can simply drag it over and place it in there. And now that page is filled. And so now I have the option of having those two images here and then a single image um, to sort of balance it out. And I kind of like that. One of the reasons I like using the auto layout as the starting point is that it's really quick and easy. It's, it's really fast. Yes, I could drag individual images onto each respective page, but that can be pretty labor intensive. And sometimes I like the fact that, the, that the randomness is actually can help me because sometimes I may see relationships within images and have them work with each other really, really well. And uh, it can be really nice. Like for example, um, I actually like the relationship between these, these two images of this girl and the mother at the beach and the, this one of the Noki. Uh, in the restaurant. They're both in terms uh, of how much white space they use, pretty much the same. So at this point I could say, I, I want to emphasize this one and let's go with a full, full width of it here. No, I actually want to go a little, a little farther with that. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess for whatever reason, it's not giving the, uh, the full bleed from, from left to right, but will it do it for this one? Let's see. Yeah, it does do that for that image. I'm not sure why it's not doing it for that, but but you can you can see what I can I have the flexibility of doing. So um, here's one image. Sometimes I'll just want to change just the relationship of one image to another. I mean, here you have this one with the uh, the image of the woman uh, walking by the wall, and I could just switch out these two images, and that works out pretty well. I like. I like the fact that it's really small, but I really don't like the fact that it's it's this image of this 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 steak uh, or this pork chop. So what I want to do is I want to see if there's another image in here that I can replace it with. And actually, I think I'll replace it with this one. That works a little better for me. And then I'm going to go. I'll go back to these. And let's go, hopefully that works a lot better for me. So I like the relationship of that image and, and that's okay here. I think I'll flip these two. Yeah, that, that works a little better for me. So you can see I can play around with the relationships of images because sometimes there'll be two images that just don't work together. And this is where I, I get to have a lot more fun. I get to really kind of explore relationships between photographs, see what things sort of vibrate or resonate in a way and with other images that doesn't happen. And there may be some images that I see here where I go, you know something, I really would just like to play them all by them themselves. So I might take out this, this portrait entirely, shift this image over to the right, and just leave that page blank and just have it be a white page. So I certainly have that flexibility of being able to do that, do that as well. So regardless of how you like to sort of design your, your pages, so this is really the, the power that you have available to you in, in Lightroom in terms of being able to get a rough draft of a book out almost immediately. I mean, it just takes a matter of seconds. And the ability to refine it, to make changes in terms of the backgrounds, the in inclusion of captions, types, all of that's available to you. But the hardest part of the work has been done for me. And then after that, it's just an issue of refinement. So I think if you haven't done this before, I really think you should explore this avenue of Lightroom. Even if you don't ever intend to put out a, a book, creating these PDFs uh, is really sort of, it gives you a feeling of, grad, uh, a feeling of accomplishment with your pictures when you see them collected in this way. I hope this has been helpful to you. If you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and spread the word on it. And if you have any comments or suggestions for me, please email me at info at the candid frame at gmail.com. And if you haven't listened to our interviews, please do so. You'll find them at the candid .com, where we offer a host of different interviews with both emerging and emerging and established photographers, which I think you'll enjoy as well.